Hey guys, what's up? Murder of Birds here, and just finished watching Naruto episode 342, and I gotta say, definitely one of the greatest episodes in terms of action, sequences, uh, animation, all that stuff. It was really great to me. I liked, I mean, the overall focal point was the secret of the transportation jutsu, how it works, how it's detailed, and that was pretty awesome too. But getting action, we had, you know, Naruto, Guy, Kakashi going in, you have Toby showing off his abilities and his techniques, and, you know, his skill in terms of fighting, and everything was just really great about this episode. Uh, it was very, it was very, like, the pacing was really good too, because I believe in within the next two or three episodes, we're going to get the overall revelation of who Toby is, his identity is going to be revealed, and obviously we're going to get the full explanation, you know, of how he got his ability, where he got the Sharingan eye that he has, if it's not already his or something like that. But um, very looking forward to that, and I'm pretty sure anime-only viewers are going to look forward to that. Some might, some not, won't, but, you know, overall I'm pretty sure it's going to be good. But uh, the episode in general, uh, the first, the opening part was really good for me. It, it was a good change of pace, Naruto as a kid. And, you know, looking in retrospect, he's thinking about his parents and Jiraiya, uh, you know, how they have so much belief in him. And then as a kid, he's looking up against at the Hokage statue and thinking, hey, I admire these people. I love having a hero to look up to and want to be like and aspire and surpass. And that's always been Naruto's mindset. He's always wanted to be the best when it comes to being Hokage. He wants to have people look up to him because he's not that immature kid that he used to be that we all knew. So I did like how his resolve is still unshakable. And it's unchanged, and I think it will never change. Uh, I mean, it obviously will never change. That's just who Naruto is. So I like that opening. It was definitely a good change of pace. Moving forward in more, we got action. And this episode was very heavily action-oriented. You got Guy and Naruto going up against Toby. You know, uh, and Toby, you got to give credit to him, too. Like, you got to respect the fact that he knows how to deal and handle and take care of himself. Because you have Naruto, who's in Biju mode. As we know, Biju, I'm sorry, QB mode. Which QB mode is actually really fast and fluid and powerful. Powerful. And you have Guy who, you know, he, he wasn't, he didn't activate any gates, but he's still seriously strong at his normal state. And you had Toby dealing with it. You know, he, you had him attacking and being on the offense at times. And I like the animation a lot in this episode because it showcased when Toby wanted to fight and when the action was fast and serious. And then it slowed down so you can see how he transitioned with his transportation jutsu and how he got the upper hand on them or how like he would have grabbed Naruto or Guy if it wasn't for them coordinating and coming back in so that way Toby can stay transparent. That was pretty awesome too. I think the animation when it came to showcasing his powers a lot, like the ability of the transportation was pretty fresh. Uh, but obviously the focal point of this episode was the explanation of the transportation jutsu and I like how they showcased it because... Uh, if you read the manga, which I did read the manga when this came out, uh, wa reading how the technique works, uh, you know, to some people it really, it's closure for them, they know how to interpret it, they know what it's like, but for me personally, I like to have a bit of visual accompaniment when it comes to reading about explanations, that's how I was with Izanami, I read about Izanami, it was still really drafty and confusing, I had to watch other videos to find out what it was really about, and then when it came out in the anime, I finally, you know, was able to comprehend how it works, and that's the same way with this technique, you see it, it I read it in the manga, it wasn't, it was a, still a bit cloudy as to how it originally worked, and then you see in this one, it's so well put together, it's so well detailed how Kakashi explained it. And then they give you visual accompaniment if you still can't understand it. Uh, and I think it's pretty cool too. But, the, the, you know, that raises the question of who exactly Toby is. Where did he get that Sharingan eye? Because as we know, the eye that Kakashi has was given to him by Obito years ago back when he was a kid. And Toby says that he got his eye from the last Ninja War, which was around the same time that Kakashi got his. So, uh, I don't know if he found the, you know, the body of Obito or something like that, or if he was working with someone at the time, because, I mean, he's really old now, so he had to have been really young back then, too, on top of that. But, I mean, that's speculation for everybody else. Pretty soon, I'm pretty sure within the next two or three episodes, we're going to get the overall revelation of who Toby really is. But overall, I mean, the episode, everything was pretty great. The music on top of that, let me talk about the music for a bit, too. The organ that was playing when Toby was getting serious, I think that was like the greatest music they could have used because that music really brought back uh, really brought back the feeling of sinister and serious plot because we got that a lot with Orochimaru back in the day. 
Another few things, you know, the Ghetto Mazo statue is transforming into the Ten Tails. His eyes are bleeding and everything, and that's pretty crazy. Um, and then you had Toby use this ability. He used, uh, it was called the Uchiha Flame Formation, which was like a firewall. When, when Killer B went to go punch it, his hand got burned. So I thought that was pretty cool, too, seeing a little bit of a new technique. Uh, but overall, you know, it's, it's leading up to the inevitable. It's leading up to the final revelation, the biggest, probably one of the biggest... Uh, reveals of an identity character in, in anime history, some one that a lot of people want to find out about. And if you're an anime only viewer, you're definitely going to be in for a ride <laughs> for the future. But uh, you know, the last sequence too, you have Naruto in, in Biju mode going in, going in for the attack, going he charged in, and then the, uh, the episode ended. So I thought that was pretty cool. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's the only thing I got for you guys for this review. Uh, let me know how you guys thought about the episode in general, uh, or anything that I missed out on, or anything in between. Also, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you guys next week. Thanks a lot, guys. Peace.